He's blessing me. Hallelujah. Whew. Thank the Lord for being here. Come on, give God a hand. This is, this is a, a beautiful and a wonderful day in the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord Amen. one more time. Amen. 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 It's good to be with you in the house of the Amen. Lord. Amen. Amen. Even those of you that are joining us uh, on TV or virtually or wherever you're you're in fellowship with us. It's this time that we get to connect. Amen. This time that we get to come together. And I'm privileged today uh, because the Lord has blessed us. Uh, the Lord uh, has given us a spiritual gift. Amen. 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 He has given us a spiritual gift. Amen. And it, it was embodied in the person of a woman. Amen. 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 And, and when I'm reminded, uh, Rochelle, when... Mary conceived Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, Mary didn't know what all was going to happen, but she just said, be it done unto me. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and then Jesus developed in her care. Mm -hmm. And the things that happened over the years, uh, nobody understood, nobody knew what it was like to be baby Jesus, Amen. teenage Jesus. Amen. 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 They didn't know that when he was going through those adolescent years and the lessons and the experiences, who he would become Amen. And, and who the world would see him to be and how his life would be impacting us for generations to come. Amen. And, and we have been privileged with such a spiritual gift Amen. Uh, in the person of Sister Cecilia Davis Amen. that uh, Amen. when she was born and when she went through the things that she was going through, Nobody knew. Amen. Nobody knew what Amen. she would become. Nobody Amen. knew uh, when she was dealing with the trials of her teen years. Nobody Amen. knew what she would become. But God was pressing her Amen. and developing her and making her something unique and special Amen. in the kingdom of God. Amen. And then God has prepared her for such a time as this. Amen. That she can speak into our lives words that are going to change our lives forever. Words that will heal us, words that will deliver us, Amen. words that will save, Amen. words that will resonate throughout the airwaves to people that she will never see, but they will hear her words Amen. Amen. and their lives will never be the same. Yes. I'm asking you to celebrate with me our own Sister Cecilia. Amen. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start with my friend. Amen. I'm going to start with some prayer. Amen. 
Uh, for those who are online, we, we usually have a little bit of a praise session before we come in and listen to music, and, and we try to try to get a little dance in and a little worship in before we get on, but we're going to go ahead and uh, pray. I'm going to ask those who can to rest on your feet with me. Pray. Amen. Ooh, Lord yes, Jesus. God. God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. We thank you and we honor you on today, oh God. Thank you. We thank you for being who you are in our lives, oh God. For all the things that you have done for us, oh God, and through us, oh yes, God. Yes. Even though we are as filthy rags in your sight, oh God, you still saw fit to use us for your will and your purpose, oh God, and we don't take that lightly. We thank you, oh God, for your love, oh God, your grace and your mercy and your unchanging hand, oh God, for continuing to keep us, oh God, even in times where we didn't want you to keep us, when we were trying to figure it all out by ourselves, oh God, instead of turning to you. When we turned, we knew that you were there the whole time, oh God. So we thank you, oh God, for continuing to be with us in the midst of it all, oh God. For never leaving or forsaking us, oh God. We thank you for your love, oh God. Your unconditional love. For loving us in spite of us, oh God. Even the rich like us, oh God, you still love us, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that you entrust us to carry on your good news, oh God. Greater works shall we do is what you said, oh God. So we thank you for your power, oh God. God. Yes, God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that comes to help us and to equip us even more so, oh God, yes. to do your work in the kingdom, oh God. Yes, we thank you, oh God, for, for being so mindful of us, oh God, yes, for knowing exactly what we need. We honor you, oh God, yes, for you are Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning and the end, oh God. We thank you, oh God, just for being who you are. Great or your works, oh God, yes, through yes, us yes. and in the work world, oh God. So we thank you, oh God, you. for all that you're doing, for lives that have been saved, oh God, for lives that are currently uh, in the works of being saved, oh God. Because we know, oh God, that you don't exist in time, oh God, and nothing is beyond your reach and your means, oh God. So we thank you for all that you're doing right now, oh God. We thank you for your healing hand, oh God. We thank you for keeping us from hurt and danger, oh God, for just having your hands on us and breathing your life into us, oh God, this morning. You didn't have to, but you saw fit to do so. So we honor you on today, and we give you all the glory, honor, and the praise. I just ask, Lord God, that you help me to decrease, oh God, so that you may increase, that the people will be able to hear you through me, oh God. Not Cece, but they will hear your word through your servant, oh God. And we just want to say that we honor you, we love you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Uh, Pastor Kenneth preached last week about the basket mm -hmm. being on our head. Uh, I was trying to have a basket on my head this weekend. <laughs> I was definitely trying to have a basket on my head this weekend, but I thank God that... Uh, <laughs> We have a pastor that encourages us to, to stand strong and to allow God to use us. Amen. Amen. So we praise God for that. So I'm going to start off with a TV reference. All okay. right. I'm going to start off with a TV reference. Because mm -hmm. y'all always trying to get me. Every time I get past him, he started singing the song before we got up here. And I was like, what song is that? <laughs> hey, they always want to sing songs that I ain't never heard of before and yeah, you know it's gonna bring up shows them. and movies I ain't never heard of. Right. So for those who don't know I, I think I'm probably the, one of the youngest here. Mm -hmm. So they're always referencing stuff I don't understand. So I don't know if you guys know this TV reference but I'm gonna bring up the show Friends. Alright. Oh it sounds like y'all know what I'm talking about a little bit. A little bit about Friends. I was a big fan of Friends and what led me to my, my, my sermon on today is God gave me a word, and the word was pivot. Okay. Mm -hmm. The word was pivot, and it made me think about the show Friends. For all the true Friends uh, fans out there, mm -hmm. there was a particular episode where Ross was trying to get a sofa mm -hmm. up the apartment steps in their New York flat. Uh -huh. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, yeah. but... Ross decided that he was going to go and buy a sofa and try to take it into the house itself. He didn't allow the people to deliver it because he had a plan on what he was going to do. He was going to try to get the sofa up these steps in this tiny uh, New York apartment stairwell. Um, 
Ross had a plan. He even drew a sketch and everything. He showed a sketch to the friends on how he planned on uh, making sure that he maneuvers the, the self up the steps. They want the strong friend, Joey, to come and help, but only Chandler and a woman showed up to help him. <laughs> so already his, his plan was already kind of right. on the rocks because he's right. like, oh, I don't know if I got the tools I need because he already had everything planned out. He had mapped out. He knew who was going to help him. Mm -hmm. He had a sketch, mm -hmm. a sketch, a drawing of how they were going to maneuver it up the steps. I see, I see. Um, but during the, the process of them trying to get it up the steps, there was a couple of turns. Mm -hmm. And they got it up the first flight to the landing, and they got it up to where they were coming around the turn. And as they were trying to come and bring the sofa around the turn, Ross kept yelling, pivot! 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 Is what he kept saying to them to the point where Chandler just told him, shut up. <laughs> He's like, there's only so much pivoting this sofa's going to do. Either it's going to get up these steps or it's not. So Ross had this great plan on how he was going to get this large sofa up and he thought that all they needed to do was, was maneuver it the way he had planned for them to maneuver it so that they can get it up the steps to his apartment. That's good preaching on that. But one thing God spoke to me through thinking about that, as I was thinking about that, that particular scene and just laughing, he made me kind of reflect on myself in particular, but us as people. When I thought about us as people, I thought about the scripture that God doesn't put more on us than we can bear. Yeah. But he also said, but sometimes we try to take on things that are too large for us. That's right. Amen. Sometimes we try to take on things that are too large for us. And in that particular scene in Friends, he was trying to make something large fit up into an area that it wouldn't fit. They were trying to carry it and maneuver it. They had their own plan. But they couldn't maneuver it because it was too large for them to maneuver mm -hmm. up the steps. Mm -hmm. So God uh, uh, spoke to me about us taking on things that are too large for us. Mm -hmm. And what he said was you can't pivot carrying items that are too large for you. My God. Mm -hmm. That led me into looking into the definition of pivot. Because I thought I had my own understanding of what pivot meant. But when I went to the dictionary... It gave me definitions that I never even knew that pivot meant. Okay. One of the definitions of pivot is the central point or shaft on which a mechanism turns. Mm -hmm. The central point or the shaft on which a mechanism turns. Mm -hmm. The other definition it gave me was completely change the way in which one does something. Okay. Mm. okay. Do that one again. Okay. The second definition it gave me was completely change the way in which one does something. Mm -hmm. So not only is pivoting changing to a different means of doing something, but it also uh, represents the central point mm -hmm. of which an item turns. So if you think about a circle, we all have protractors in school. Mm -hmm. You have your, you're trying to make a circle, you got the central point of right. the protractor, right. and you got the pencil. Right. Mm -hmm. That it's rotating on. Right, right, right. Uh, so that would be pivoting. Mm -hmm. It's pivoting on that axis right. or that central point mm -hmm. to make that circle with the protractor. Right. So it's like, God, what does this have to do with anything? Mm -hmm. What What are you trying to say? And I struggled to even write this message. I called Pastor Ken and I was like, uh, I just don't feel like I'm getting anything. And all I'm hearing is pivot. And I don't know. I don't, that's all I got. That's all I got. I don't have nothing else. And I don't want to get up there tomorrow and not have anything to say. And he was like, hmm. 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 He was like, uh, I'm just trying to figure out what will change next week. Because I said, well, maybe I can go next week. You know, you know, this week, you know unless you're out of town or something, you know, because if you're out of town, I do what I need to do. But uh, if you're not out of town, can I just get another week so I can prepare? And he said, uh, I wonder what changed next week. And I just kind of calmed down. I thought about that. You know, he has a way of asking you questions and <laughs> make you kind of be quiet and think about some things. It's just a one liner, like, oh, so you just gonna you just gonna ask me that, huh? <laughs> That's how I feel sometimes, like you just gonna ask me that, huh? Right, right. And it wasn't to the point that I completely shut myself off 
and cut out the noise that I was able to really hear what God was saying. Mm -hmm. And in that, I realized God was talking about me. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Wow. Okay. Pivot. Mm -hmm. Pivot. You've been so distracted with so many different things. We have been so distracted with so many things. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been a lot of noise in our ears as far as what's required of us. Uh, Self-doubt, hatred towards ourselves has been uh, something that we've been battling with internally. Mm -hmm. And other things that we've been battling with internally. God wants us to pivot from certain mindsets, behaviors, and thinking. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't put more on us than we can bear. But he also tells us to bear with one another. We're supposed to bear with one another. Um, but in bearing with one another, we're not supposed to try to take the place of God in each other's lives. That's good. And when I, when I was thinking about the, the friends reference, I said, boy, it was a lot of preaching in this friends re right. reference. Because right. I'm like, they were trying to bear and, and maneuver the soul for William, and they still weren't able to do it. So I was like, God, so what do you mean by, by bearing with one another then? What does that look like? And one of the things that 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 he um that he spoke to me was that we are to bear with one another, but not try to take the place of God, because again, some things are if it's too large for us to carry, he's given us his hand to be able to help us through those things. Amen. Amen. We are to bear with one another, but we're supposed to be there for each other, to intercede for one another, mm -hmm. and to, to speak in into each other's lives, but not to play God in each other's life. Amen. Amen. Um, yeah, so to empathize with people and to intercede with them. Mm -hmm. um, and I asked God, because I thought about all kinds of scriptures that were coming to my head, and this message was challenging and breaking down some of my beliefs of scripture and just things I've been told over time. So I asked God, why don't you tell us to cast our cares on you and to lay down things if the others or if other people are to help us to carry this? Because I'm still dealing with that mm -hmm. word bear. What does it mean to bear with one another? Mm -hmm. um, what does it mean to bear with one another? But again, he took me back to the friends reference. He said that I'm the center point. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm the center point. Amen. Bearing with one another doesn't mean taking my place. Mm -hmm. Even when you have help from others, you still have to go through me. Amen. You still Amen. need me as the center point Amen. and yes. the, the focus for you to be able to pivot and turn from things in your situation. Mm -hmm. So it all works together. And the, 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 the definition talks about a mechanism. So it's like a well or a machine. My, uh, I had a, 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 a mentor who used to say that all the time when we work together because my, my job, we have to collaborate a lot. And there's so many different moving parts and pieces. He, when things come together, he said like a well or a machine. Mm -hmm. So he is the center point. Then we're on the other side and we're spinning around that and he's giving us each other. Mm -hmm. To help to bear things with one another Amen. and help strengthen each other and help each other to pivot. But we can't pivot absent him. We mm -hmm. end up like Ross and his friends trying to get the large sofa mm -hmm. into an area that it never was designed to even go up anyway. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, he also talked to me about weight. Now, when he first started talking about weight, I'm like, hey, now. <laughs> hey, now. I'm like, I know I'm physically overweight. Uh, what you trying to say, God? I know I need to get it together. But he just talked about being burdened. The things that we have been burdened with, the large loads, not only just physically, because, I mean, yeah, I, I know I can stand to lose some weight. I don't know about anybody else, but he just started talking about the mental burdens that we have. Mm -hmm. He started talking about the mental burdens that we have and, and where our focus is that's weighing us down, that's per, uh, preventing us from moving forward. Mm -hmm. I had to ask myself, uh, I'm trying to put this basket on. I didn't want to admit I was trying to put the basket on. Well, he's like, you're trying to put the basket on. <laughs> but what is it that's trying to make me put the basket on? It's the, the weights that we take upon ourselves. He told us to cast the weight. Mm -hmm. Cast away, it's not trying to take them up ourselves mm -hmm. and have our own plan on how we're going to maneuver them, mm -hmm. but to cast them and Amen. our hairs and his Amen. feet Amen. because he cares for us. Amen. <clears throat> so God is the center point of our life and should be the focus and the, and, and the thing that 
that we revolve around. Our life should revolve around him. He gave me a visual of, you know, back in the day, I don't know if anybody ever did this, but when we were kids, we used to grab hands with one another and we would kind of spin, mm -hmm. spin each other around. Mm -hmm. And he showed me that is our relationship with him, mm -hmm. holding on to his hands, and he helps to maneuver us and to spin us around was the visual they gave me. I'm a visual person, guys. Mm -hmm. So God shows me things sometimes through, 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 mm -hmm. In, in animated ways. Um, okay. So to pivot means to completely change the way in which one does something. That means changing our thinking, our behaviors, mm -hmm. and how we treat ourselves as well because once we pivot, we'll treat ourselves better. When I even thought about the weight issue, and me and my husband were just talking recently, mm -hmm. and we were talking about loving ourselves and taking care of our bodies. If I love myself, and I, I'll take care of, of my body that God mm -hmm. gave me. He only gave us one. Uh, we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. God spoke to us about that a long time ago with dealing with my eating and my weight. And I've been struggling with that for years. But what he had to reveal to me is it's a reflection of how I feel about myself. Mm -hmm. Even though in, in a subconscious way. Because sometimes we think, oh, well, I'm good. You know, this, this, that. And I'm beautifully made. And which we are. But there are ways that God has instructed us to do things as well. Mm -hmm. There's a race that we're running. And... Um, God wants us to be able to take care of ourselves from a physical perspective so that we can have the energy and not be burdened down with unnecessary things mm -hmm. on our journey. Amen. Some Amen. stuff we uh, take on to ourselves that we don't need to, Amen. and Amen. it's from a lack of control and, and other things, uh, sin and, and, and all kind of things that burden us down that makes it hard for us. Mm -hmm. It's a weight. Yeah, Try yeah. running a marathon with, with or a race with, with 50 pound weights on you, 100 pound weights on you. You know, you're not going to be able to move as fast. You're not going to be able, you're going to be tired. You're going to be panting. You're going to be wore out Amen. if you get past the finish line. Right. Amen. So think of the weights that we take on in life and what that does to us mm -hmm. in a spiritual standpoint. It bogs us down yeah. to where it makes us. I don't want to say ineffective, it, but it tries to make us ineffective mm -hmm. because it doesn't have power over us. So right. I don't want to give it the power, but we take on things unnecessarily. So God is saying pivot. Mm -hmm. Pivot from those things, those weights that easily beset us. Pivot from the thinking and the mindset that, that, that gets us into places of depression, that gets us into overeating, mm -hmm. that gets us into being mean and nasty to one another. It starts up here. Well, it starts in the heart. Mm -hmm. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's but right. also, too, the mindset. The mindset. What's going on in our minds? Mm -hmm. uh, I remember uh, when I was a little girl, my mom had the DVD set for... Um, Joyce Myers, The Battlefield of the Mind. Mm -hmm. Our minds is a powerful thing, and that's why the enemy tries to continuously infiltrate our minds. Amen. To keep us distracted yeah. and off course so that we can't run the race that we need to run, or mm -hmm. so that we'll miss things along the way. Because mm -hmm. if I'm bogged down and I have these weights on me, I'm going to miss some things along the way. Amen. Uh, even in this process of getting ready, I was so bogged down by just different things in life I couldn't even hear what God was saying to me concerning things to the point where I'm like, well, maybe I just need to go next week. And it's like, no, you need to sit down somewhere and 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 and, and, and cast some things. You need to pray. You need to get in my face. Amen. And you'll hear what I'm saying to you. Amen. So sometimes, even those places, where most times, if we're unable to get into the presence of God, that's because we've been spending too much time uh, with other things going on and not giving him enough time. Amen. Uh, we have to make sure that we're in God's face and seeking his face so that we can uh, make sure that we have that connection with him Amen. so that we can speak in and out of season so that we can be a light for those around us. Amen. If we're not connected, we're giving them us and not giving them him because what's in us, again, the abundance of the heart, mm -hmm. the mouth speaks. So what's in there the most? What am I consuming? What am I putting into myself? Amen. And whatever I'm putting into myself on a regular basis is what I'm going to give to other people. Amen. So pivot is what he says, uh, that we need to pivot from those uh, behaviors, those mindsets, and uh, he specifically uh, stressed for me how we treat ourselves. Mm -hmm. We don't treat ourselves that well. And it's hard to treat other people well if we don't even know how to treat ourselves and we don't know how to uh, treat God in our relationship with him. So Romans uh, 12 and 12, uh, 12 and 2 uh, was one of my, my scriptural references. Uh, and I'll be reading from the NIV version. 
I just wanted to make sure I had some type of scripture in here. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Say, so they won't say I didn't preach. I got a That's scripture right. in here. Amen. Not just friends, but we're going to go to Romans 12 and 2. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, I'll be reading from the NIV version. Romans 12 and 2 on the NIV version. It says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, mm -hmm. but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm -hmm. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Right. So be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Renewing means to resume after an interruption. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Renewing means to resume after an interruption. Behold, all things have become new. Mm. Amen. All things have become new. And he took me to that scripture. And I said, well, behold, all things have become new. We're renewing our minds. If all things are new, why do we have to renew our minds? And what God said to me was, there was an interruption along the way. Mm. Amen. Amen. He has made us new in our coming to our relationship with him and giving our life over to him. But what has distracted you or interrupted you along the way? Wow. Amen. Amen. What has distracted? So he's telling us in his word in Romans 12 and 2 that we need to be renewing our minds daily. Amen. That means that we need to be turning away from, from things that beset us. And we need to resume after interruption. But more so than that, uh, at a point, as we grow uh, in our spiritual maturity, we have to stop allowing things mm -hmm. to interrupt us and beset us so easy. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So back um, then I backed up to 12 and 1 to read the full context of it. In 12 and 1, this is where it talks about presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice. Mm -hmm. When we fail to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, which means living means it's active, right now, mm -hmm. in the present, mm -hmm. we're doing this. We're presenting our bodies a living sacrifice. So Jesus came and he died for us, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Jesus yeah. came and he died for us, so right. he presented his body as a sacrifice for us so that we can have eternal life. Right. Amen. Amen. But when we fail to present our body as a living sacrifice, we fail to meet a requirement that God has for us. Mm. Amen. Amen. That's good. So we no longer have to sacrifice animals but we are to now present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Amen. Amen. Just like Christ died for us and sacrificed his body for us, we in turn, as our reasonable service, are to present our body as a living sacrifice unto God. Amen. So if we're not doing that, then there's some, some things that come on the back end of that, which is all the floodgates of things that's coming into our life that's bogging us down. If we're presenting ourselves as a living sacrifice, that requires that we walk in faith and that we trust God. Amen. When we trust God, or just trust in general, we submit without having to know or mm -hmm. to figure out everything. Amen. Amen. That's what it really looks Amen. like to Amen. submit Amen. and trust God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Again, I go back to the friend's reference. He had it all mapped out. He had his own plan and right. he drew out all right. a whole roadmap of how they were going to accomplish right. yeah. something that was way too large for them. Right. How many times do we have plans right. and right. we're trying right. to figure everything out right. instead right. of going to God mm -hmm. and getting instruction from him, number one, because I believe that if Ross had uh, talked to someone, mm -hmm. maybe even the store people, right. mm -hmm. I don't know who it was, but if he would have talked to someone, someone probably would have told him, hey, you live in an apartment building. You're not going to be able to get this off of the steps. Right. right. <laughs> but he had a plan in his mind. Mm -hmm. Instead of consulting with other people, he thought that he can do it, and he had his own plan and thought that he can figure it out. So part of us in our relationship with God, we have to trust him and, mm -hmm. and know that he knows what's best for us. Amen. Amen. Right. Trust him and submit to him so that we can so that we can minimize the unnecessary things that we put on ourselves. Amen. Amen. Right pivot in our mindset and our behavior. Amen. A lot of us grew up in circumstances where it caused us not to trust people. Mm -hmm. But we have a new relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Behold, all things have become new. Amen. We are new creatures yes, in Christ. Yes. But we have to make a pivot in our mindset 
so that we can fully submit and trust God and allow the old things to pass away oh, in our lives so that they're not being a stumbling block yeah. for us right. and preventing us from being able to move into who God has called us to be. Amen. 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 My next scripture reference is uh, Hebrews 4, 15 through 16 in the NIV version. And it says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses. Mm-hmm. Now, empathize, I'm sorry. Empathize with our weaknesses. Mm-hmm. But we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let then... Uh, uh, let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. So in, in this scripture, I, and I love the way the NIV um, spelled it out because in the King James, I believe it says, we have a high priest that's not touched by the feelings of our infirmities. And when you hear infirmities, usually you'll think about sicknesses. When we talk about infirmities, we're talking about people being sick and, 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 and illnesses and things like that. But in the NIV, it translated infirmities into weaknesses. And I thought that that was powerful because it changes the meaning of that scripture when you read it as God understands and Jesus understands our weaknesses and he had weaknesses himself that he, and, and things that he was tempted in but he still came out of them without, without sin. But that lets us know that we can do the same thing and it encourages me specifically because um, he gave us the power to do those things to be able to go undergo those things without worrying about uh, being overtaken by them because he already gave us the power and the victory. Amen. Um, Amen. Empathy uh, is not to be confused with pity because sometimes we, we get empathy and sympathy mixed up. Right. You know, uh, right. sympathy, you know, you feel sorry for somebody, but when you truly empathize with somebody, you've had that experience and you understand. There's a different level of understanding right. that comes with right. empathizing right. with people. Yeah. So again, Jesus em- can empathize with our weaknesses. That means he had to have gone through those same things himself in order to empathize with them. It's hard to empathize with someone if you haven't been there. Amen. But Jesus has. And we Amen. praise God for his journey Amen. because Amen. it gave us someone, even when we feel like we don't have anybody else, Amen. that we know he has been through those things and he understands uh, what we're going through. Amen. Uh, in Isaiah, um, the Israelites were going to war. And God was encouraging them in this particular uh, chapter. He takes hold of their right hand and he pronounces victory over them. Before they even go into the battle, he had already pronounced victory over them. Mm -hmm. We can have confidence in God's unchanging helping hand. There's no need for us to fear. There's no need for us to feel like he's going to leave or forsake us. He didn't leave the Israelites and the scripture says that he will never leave or forsake us. So we know that he's there regardless of what we're going through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let God be the center by which we revolve around and take hold of his hand and don't let go. And that's my prayer for you in Jesus' name. Amen.